what do you call that? The cheesiest, best tasting empanada you ever eat in your life. Ooh, what a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Look at the shade, the clouds, everything. God has blessed us today. And what are we talking about? One of my favorite pocket foods that you can stick in your pocket on the go, empanadas. Meat pie. Really sort of originated in Argentina and the flavors have drifted north forever. But it's a little meat pie that has a great filling but really a good flaky crust. And I learned how to make pie crust a long time ago and we're gonna show you the tips and tricks for the best empanada ever. Ooh. A lot of y'all been wondering, you can see in that camera pointed right back over here, Sadie's in time out again. What's she in time out for? Hey, you know the pups are always up here. Be sure and check out our breakfast burrito video last time and you will see why she's in time out. She changed colors from that color to black mud pond. I mean, awful stinking. But let's talk about empanada dough. Now, really the dough is sort of like a pastry more than it is like a pie crust because you want it to be light and fluffy and flaky, but also when you bite into that empanada, you want to be able to see the layers, but you want it to be sort of a chewy crust. So to start out with that, what we're going to do is two cups of lukewarm water. But I've always wondered about lukewarm. There was Cool Hand Luke, he was in a movie, but this is lukewarm, so we're going to start out with about two cups of warm water. We have a stick of melted unsalted butter. To make a really good flaky crust, there's two things that I really recommend. Sadie has a problem. She drank all the vodka this morning. That's why she's really on timeout. But vodka makes a good flaky pie crust. But also what? Apple cider vinegar. Yeah. So we're going to probably do about a tablespoon, which is about... That much right there. Then we're going to add a what? A little bit of sea salt in there. Probably about a tablespoon. Uh-huh. We're going to give that a really good stirring. And there's something floating in here, Shen. And I don't know what he is seeing coming around there. I think he's a red pepper flake. He'll be all right. As long as he doesn't have wings. That is true. All-purpose flour. Now, this calls for six cups of flour. This is a two cup measure and it's sprinkling. Can y'all hear that hitting my hat? That is a, not, but it is sprinkling. It is a great sound, it is. Be sure and check your date on your baking powder, baking soda, make sure that it is good. We're gonna put a little in there. And remember everything that we use today will be listed down there in the little links below to where you can find the recipe. A little bit of baking soda okay now we got that in there with a few sprinkles of rain you got to have that if you ain't got it go outside get the water hose stand 40 yards off and give I it a little sprinkling really, like you can see it's really yeah raining. it is nice so folks to that and you probably ain't gonna see it nowhere but right here live and in technicolor not memorex not nothing chili seasoning goes in the in the dough gives it a really sort of a different touch of flavor okay that is mixed bring your butter back over here to you and folks, I don't want you just to dump all that in there. That is not the correct way to make this. Just go a little bit at a time and mix. And you may have to adjust your flour to make sure that this gets to the, what are you having trouble under there, Mage? Gets to the thickness and the consistency that we want. You need to start about two hours and 45 minutes before this because this dough has to be chilled. That's what makes it so good. I've been counting. 9,362 raindrops in there. So this will be really good dough because it's sweetened from heaven. So flour your surface well, whether it be a cutting board countertop, and I just need you to roll it over, mash it, so we can get it to where we have all the wet spots gone. I think it's what they call, give your glutens a workout. Wrap her up with some of that good clean wrap, put it in a baggie, put it in some, throw it into your Yeti ice chest or the refrigerator, for at least two hours, at least two. Now, we gotta caramelize some onions, and some of you are thinking, why don't you just throw them in there with the meat? Folks, this way we're gonna bring so much more flavor. So, finely chop you a yellow onion or a white. I have no preference on this, whatever you wanna use. Put you a table, two tablespoons of unsalted butter in a cast iron skillet over low heat, okay? 
Well, let's turn it up to medium low to start out with. Throw them in there, let that butter melt, get them onions in there, stir it around a little bit. When they begin to brown just a tad, turn it to low. It is very important because we don't want to burn these onions up. Then I want you to add that whole dried oregano. So we're going to let them cook about 10 minutes, all right? But stir them occasionally. I ask you to get three garlic cloves, mince them up pretty good, drop them in there, just give them a quick stir, and then set that off the fire. Because this is going to cook again when we get it in that meat, but we don't want to burn that garlic. Well, in that cast iron skillet right there, we have one half of a pound of ground beef, certified Angus beef. Now, we're going to add to that some ground pork sausage, one half of a pound. Get them browned up in there pretty good, and then what? We're going to add a half of a orange bell pepper. In go the bell pepper. Next over here, we have one diced jalapeno that has been stemmed and seeded. Green chilies, hatch green chilies they are. We're gonna give it a little stir here. Make sure nobody jumps out. Mage is under there just in case some meat falls out. I need you to come back over here to what? Them onions and that oregano and mm, go ahead and just put them in here. Make sure you don't leave nobody in the pot. Give it another stir. Remember, we're on about medium low heat right here. Some of our good mesquite seasoning. So give it a pretty good dosing, we are. But to that, for empanadas, I like to use some good smoked paprika as well. Now we're gonna go ahead, even though everything is brown, we've gotta cook that to where them bell peppers are tender and we want all that flavor to blend after we've seasoned it. So I'm saying three to four more minutes here and you'll be good to go. Stir it occasionally. Well, we have set the meat aside. We hard just let it mind its own business. Go ahead and get you some fry oil and put it in a vessel that you're gonna deep fry and have a deep fry thermometer because we need to run this oil at 350 degrees. Now, due to the magic of television and I wanted to eat empanadas last night, we made some more dough and I had some chilling and I've done used a little out of it, but this is gonna give you the general purpose here. Go ahead and make sure you've got your surface floured well. And I just want you to take a knife and on your regular big old disc of dough, you'd cut that in fourths like that. But since I've done used half of this, we're just going to cut it in half. But be sure that you cut yours in four equal pieces. And the pieces that you're not using, you need to go ahead, cover back up. And if it's going to take you a while, put these back in the, in the refrigerator or the ice chest. Because this dough's going to work best when it's cold to seal up really well when we fry it. So take this piece. Go ahead and I like to go ahead and try to make it round like it is and pull it down. You can see how we're sort of doming it up in the middle. Give it a little shaking of flour. Shake your rolling pin and sing that song that was it Three Dog Night that sang that song, Shan? Rolling, 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 huh? Rolling down the river. I don't know who sang it. Now, when you roll so long on one side, Let's go ahead and turn this over and roll it the other. It's going to help that dough stretch out, but you can see the thickness is about an eighth of an inch. That's sort of where I like to start. Now, empanadas is supposed to be something that you can put in your pocket or hold six in your hand at one time, really. So we're looking for a four and a half inch circular device. Don't tell the beagle this come off his treat jar. So I just brought it with me, but I like to look around the kitchen and see what else I can use. Give them a mashing. And just peel it right out of there. Here we have our perfectly four and a half inch circle. Now me, I like to give them just a little mashing because dough will shrink after it's set here for just a minute. So give it a little mashing. And we're going to start out with what? The meat. So that is a pretty generous helping right there. Because if you get too much in here, folks, with the cheese, you can't shut the door. And we got to shut the door because... You, we do not want any grease to get in there. Now, we have two kinds of cheeses today. We do mozzarella and a pepper jack. Cut in some little cubes, we do. Now, give it a little mashing. Get everybody sort of situated there in the middle and then just roll him over. You're gonna have to stretch this dough a little. Then I just want you to pick it up with your hand. It's like a little clamshell now. And I want you to just take it and then twist it. Crimp it, twist it. Crimp it, twist it. You think you're at the hairdresser, don't you, Shan? Crimp it and twist it. Because, folks, 
the sealing of this is very important. I have one more tip for you. Keep your little water handy. If your dough isn't really sticking together, just take your finger, wet it, put it around one side of the edge. Be sure to dry your hands though before you start back. It'll seal up really well. So I'm going to finish these up and then it's time to hit the fryer. Remember, good fry oil, 350 degrees. Make sure you have that temperature gauge there with you. Put them in there gently so you don't be splattering grease all over your fingers or the stove. And then I just want you to roll them over. It's going to take maybe two to three minutes at the most, but we're looking for a really good golden brown to light tan color. You're going to see a little puff in there come up. So, hey, let's get after it and then we'll set them on a wire rack and let them cool just a minute. I'm not going to share these with my puppies because they got too much spices, but my puppies love cheese. First cheese inspector today is the Beagle, weighing in at 59 pounds. Second cheese inspector, where you at, Mage? 16 pounds for the Mage. Duker, who is the cheese connoisseur, weighing in at 62 pounds. He likes cheese. Got to go find Sadie. She's on timeout. Here you go, Lulu. With the snaggle teeth and weighing 48. There he is. Everybody got something to eat. It is my turn. So I'm just going to start with this one right here. I'm just going to see what comes apart in there. That's what I'm. Come on. Come on with me. Don't quit me now. Please don't quit me now. Oh, Duker, did you see that? Maybe we want to do the empanada. That's the cowboy samba. Mm -hmm. Folks, like I told you, the star of the show is really that crust. And it's almost like these have been baked instead of deep fried. That's what that crimping does with that really good cold dough right there. Mm. Oh, so good it is. Remember, everything that we use today will be listed down there in the little link below. You can find it pretty easy. We thank you so much. Remember, folks, we'll be at Layman's store there in Ohio, July 23rd. Ooh, they're giving away, what you call it? A shopping spree, one of them $500 tickets, and you can shop with me. If you want to buy me something, that's fine. But find that on the website, or it'll be listed down there in the little link below. You don't want to miss that. As always, I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag flying over camp. We don't forget you, we always commend you. Thank you so much. For the rest of you, come on, come on in here. Somebody got on to me the other day because we didn't get a big enough hug. So there we go. God bless you each and every one and I'll see you down the best empanada trail you ever seen in your life. God bless you.